And I was like, Hudson, I'm here. And I was trying to be really upbeat. And the policeman came out and I said, he's okay, right? He's okay, you guys made him okay, right? And they said, no, he's not. My name is Chris Lowe, hear my story. So I grew up in Peoria, Illinois, and I was the youngest of four. It was a great little town to grow up in. I moved to Orlando and that's where I met my husband and then had three kids and then actually got divorced in 2004. Um, so Hudson was in the middle and he was, he was kind of like the, he was like the balance of everybody. But he's also an engineer that he wanted to change the world and uh, make the world a better place. He was very involved in high school and he, he was just doing it all and, and he made it look easy because he was having so much fun. You know, he's always happy. And then um, he started college and he was going to school for engineering and um, he wanted to create uh, things like Elon Musk. So, you know, he'd, he would come back from school and he would seem a little less like Hudson. And come to find out, uh, he, was, he was taking Adderall to be able to stay up and study uh, for his classes. And uh, according to him, everyone did it. And uh, one night, my daughter uh, on Snapchat, she said, you know, Hudson's at the ER. And so I called him um, and I said, Hudson, are you at the ER? And he's like, oh yeah, I had a little panic attack and I came to the ER. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He was like, oh, all the kids get a mom. It just, it, everyone at college gets panic attacks. It's just part of the deal. And so we, we start, we got him into a doctor, um, a psychiatrist, started talking to him and, the, and he gave him another prescription. When he was at school, um, he had experienced a breakup and it seemed to affect him a lot. And then when I talked to him on the phone, um, he seemed, really not himself on the phone at school. And I was, I started really getting a bad feeling. And uh, we got him home, we got him to a psychiatrist uh, back in Orlando, um, just to try to help figure things out. And uh, this, this new doctor uh, ended up putting him on six different prescriptions. You know, Hudson said, mom, I, you know, I know my own body, the doctor's telling me what to do. And uh, the doctor knows, you know, who should I trust? Who should I listen to, you or a doctor? On Sunday, he came by and he was in a great mood. He gave me a hug and he, and he got, walked over to the car and he got in the car and left. And three days later is when it happened. I never saw him again. And on that day, the day that he passed, um, we were to get together that day and we kind of text all day. And I said, hey, you wanna, um, meet up, you wanna to go to lunch? And he's like, well, my friends are coming over. We're gonna go on the paddle boards and we're gonna go in the boat. And I said, okay. So, and this is all texting, you know? And um, so I kind of, the whole day went on and I never got to see him. And I text him and said, hey, when are you gonna come over? And so he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna go to the gym and then I'll be there. And I had this, really bad feeling and I text him hey let me know when you're coming um, you know if you're still hungry I'll get you some food and he didn't text back and I called his phone he didn't answer his phone and then I text his dad and his dad was in had just gotten to uh, Georgia and I said will you text Hudson and see if he answers you because he's not answering me a few minutes went by and his dad said he's not answering me uh, go to my house and when he had texted me that, I was already in the car to drive over there. And it's, it's just like a mile away. And I pulled in the driveway and I opened the front door and, and Benji ran in in front of me. And I was like, Hudson, I'm here. And I was trying to be really upbeat. And Benji ran to his bedroom and ran straight back to me. And I walked around the corner to his room and I found him. And, um, I tried to resuscitate him and do everything that I could to, um, I mean, I called 911 in the process of it, it. And within a few minutes, all the police were in the house and took me out of the room. I was outside and the policeman came out and I said, 
he's okay, right? He's okay. You guys made him okay, right? And they said, no, he's not. So we had to start planning a celebration of life. And uh, we sat there and said, we're going to do something epic for him. And we sat at a big table at the church with 20 people and said, we want Simple Man to play. We want it to start quiet and get loud. And we want the whole marching band surrounding the entire church. It got so loud that my daughter and I went, did we go too far with this? And it was, we were crying and laughing at the same time because we could tell that Hudson was there. And when Hudson was in high school, he had done a speech called Fall Forward. And it was a, an inspiring speech about never giving up. And the last thing we played at that, at that service was that speech because we wanted everyone to walk out the door and do something that would make the world a better place in his memory. We wanted everyone to walk out the door and go, I'm gonna do something with my life because of that kid. And that's exactly what has happened. He left a mark here. And that to me is the best way that we can celebrate him or the best way anybody can celebrate losing anybody, a child or a, a, any loved one, is to carry on in their memory and make the world a better place because they were here. If you've gone through this, I know that it's very hard and I know that the grief sometimes can feel overwhelming, but the biggest thing I can tell you is keep their spirit alive, keep their memory alive, keep celebrating them every single day because every time I celebrate Hudson, I know that he's with me and he's happy. So I just wanna tell you to please keep celebrating their life and please focus on the life that they had and the time that they were here with you because that will bring you peace and that'll bring you joy. And that's really what they want from us. They want us to be happy, they really do. They don't want us to spend the rest of our life sad. They want us to be happy.